So today I'd like to make a talk on something called BitNation. And I just discovered BitNation today. And ultimately what BitNation is, is a structure for establishing basically a decentralized um, nation <laughs> without borders, without um, ultimately you know, all over the world, and anyone can participate. And what's beautiful about BitNation is it fits in perfectly with FoundUps. It's kind of like, here is FoundUps, a business model for driving BitNation. Because every, every ecosystem, and ultimately we have this thing called the startups, which is basically the uh, engine that drives our current one economy ecosystem. So we're looking to establish a new ecosystem and ultimately the idea of a bit nation is is establishing this new hierarch, hierarch, not hierarchical but decentralized um, entity for you know for basically um, a, you know world without borders that exists on the blockchain and Ultimately, what we need to do is be able to launch and fund projects through it. So BitNation is setting up and they're testing a, a DAO and it has $5 in it right now. And ultimately, what we can do is basically set ourselves up as also a DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization for fueling these found ups that ultimately could be part of the BitNation DAO. Or maybe we don't even set up, we set up the BitNation DAO and it ultimately then is set up in such a way that found ups can launch out of it as our business vehicles for, um, you know, for launching our innovations. So, I'm really excited, as you can see. So basically, um, if you are a member of BitNation, let's talk about FoundUps a little bit. In 2010, I asked this rather simple question. If the startup was broken, how would I fix it? And that line of questioning led me to FoundUps. And what I discovered was there's a lot of systemic problems with the, with the startup. Number one is the cost just to get going. I got to incorporate, I got to do all this, all this nonsense, right? And ultimately, most people don't have access to capital to, or even the ability in order to do all that crap. So FoundUps removes that because ultimately a FoundUp exists originally in 2010 as a qualified subsidiary, but now with DAO, it would be launched as a DA, uh, with, with Ethereum and DAO and the structure, FoundUp basically just launches as um, sets up as a sub DAO of this, let's call the seed DAO or, um, that, that runs it all. And basically what the fund or think of the, the seed DAO under found ups, which could be a sub DAO of the nation. Okay. So you have the nation, which is this. Okay. So the, the, the there is the nation has basically money and then ultimately it, it funds innovation because obviously the nation has to cover a lot of different things. It funds innovation through a sub DAO and it allocates resources dependent on, you know, on the um, hierarchy of the organization, how much is funded in there. And then ultimately then what happens is every time someone launches a found up, it's linking to the, the found up seed DAO, right? And when that happens, it becomes a, a DAO in itself and what fuels the found up ultimately is a number of different things what I call that val validation and there's a there's there's like 12 different ways of validation and, and then in an algorithm called the noodle manages all this autonomously and basically what happens is the found up will meet these spe specific metrics and levels up and as it does and people and one of them is actually people investing fiat currencies bitcoin and other things directly into it what happens is that valuation leverages how much 
per each cap because there's seven levels to a found up that the um, the seed the found up seed DAO allocates to that specific found up and in order to reach that next milestone the found up has to reach the next level now most found ups I would say 95 maybe even higher 98 percent of found ups will only get to level three level four um, there's no need for them to move on any further now it's kind of like think of it in terms of startups think of it as is those are what are you know most found ups do most startups do not become IPO type level startups they're small small family businesses so on so on so on in essence how I've set up found ups they're level three level four um, um, they really don't need to go any further than that the cool thing is is they're sustainable because once they reach that there's no reason for them to grow there's no there's no CAGR and, and something you should understand is is a startup is driven by this thing called compounded annual growth rate and this compounded annual growth rate basically says, hey, the planet's infinite. And we can take, 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 take from the planet without any consequence. Well, that exists because ultimately when our selfish business model was created in the you know, turn of the, well, early in the in 1700s, part of the Industrial Revolution, and you needed investors to fund railways, to fund expeditions, yada, 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 right? Um, they wanted some way to understand return in this idea of compounded growth like interest and all this stuff basically was invented um, so the problem so what found ups does is it removes that we don't have compounded annual growth rate we don't have any of that instead we have this noodle which ultimately will be kind of like a new way of mining because you'll have this autonomous agent called the noodle which is constantly going to um, be fueling and validating found ups and um, a few of them, about 1% of them, maybe 2%, will actually become uh, launch as their own DA, DAC, Distributive Autonomous Corporation. Um, they become what, what I call peer-to-peer -peer open corporations, and they become a quasi-existence until ultimately we can change the laws and everything, and DAOs will have legal standings and everything else, and maybe countries will, you know, will, will be very fast in moving that forward, and then we will just set up in those countries, but... Ideal like place in America, we will have traditional structured um, organizations that then basically in their articles and bylaws link them to the DAO, DAOC for governance. And um, you'll still have a board of directors and everything else, but however that board and everything else will be determined by the, the governments, uh, the, you know, the, the stakeholders. So ultimately then what happens is when... You know, when these transactions and everything else happen, um, the seed DAO is basically seeded back with funds. So when, and, and really, the stepping in at big, or the really big found-ups, are the ones that, um, that do their open public placements. I'm actually walking to the gym right now. So, op OPOs what do I call OPOs, open public, open public uh, placement, OPPs, I guess, initial, initial public placement, IPOs, so yeah, IPOs, uh, these are OPOs, okay, so OPOs um, is something that found ups, few found ups will go through, and then what happens is all of the, the, um, the, the, the stakes that, are, that have been allocated through the found ups are all bought up and people have a choice. Do you take shares in the new, you know, in the new, in the new organization or do you exit out and just take ether and capital gains you know, off, off, off that? So that's your choice. So ultimately, Bit Nation needs a business model and that business model ultimately it's kind of loud here with the air conditioner is or can be found ups it's a model that I've spent basically six years now living and designing um, and uh, here's a big old toad look at you you're like a big old toad aren't you aren't you a big old toad 
did he go? Oh, he's got a little hole, hole down there. Interesting. So, I hope you enjoyed this talk. And I'm looking forward to talking to Susanna and basically working together to roll in found ups with what you're doing um, with BitNation and ultimately becoming the mechanism for BitNation to you know, fuel itself because ultimately the way it would work hierarchically is you'd have the BitNation DAO and then you'd have the found ups, what I call CDAO, right? And then when these when the one percent of the found ups will be thousands, hundreds of thousands of found ups, this will be the business model that's going to drive everything. Basically, um, scale up. There's going to be a lot of interactions and, and people like basically cashing out, people exchanging found up stakes for found up dollars in order to buy something or in order to get something. The way found ups makes money is all these interactions, kind of like the same way that a a bit. Um, uh, an exchange rate on a Bitcoin exchange rate makes money off those those interactions. Same thing with found ups. So ultimately, then, as found ups becomes profitable, you know the model ultimately is going to feed back to the um, you know in, into the the found up seed pool, and ultimately then money that has been borrowed out ultimately or ether or has been borrowed out ultimately feeds back into the nation. So it works in this this complete way, in this decentralized way, um, in a pure selfish way, uh, selfless way, I should say, not selfish, selfless way, to benefit. And you know, the cool thing about these found ups and the way that they're set up is is you know once the problems succeed and stuff, and they're no longer problems, these found ups can ultimately wrap up. Or if the problem is is ongoing, the found ups can keep going, and there's none of this, you know, um, problems with um, access to closed capital networks in order to fund these things. We've created a mechanism for our nation, Bit Nation, to fund decentralized, selfless startups, open startups called found ups. Thanks.